Hey, Dave. Hey, Lawrence. Hey, Way. Hey, guys. Hi, this is Hank. Hank. While everyone is joining, I just realized because Guy Fodokov messaged that to me that in January 25 this year, the Chinese year of rats, sorry, of the rats, of course, starts. <laughs> So the stars are like ready for work. And next this mean... year is the year of rats. Yes, the next year, uh, the starting in January 25, Chinese year is the under the zodiac yeah. of rats. Exactly. <laughs> it's actually metal or golden rat. Hi, this is Monty. I want to. Hopefully it's plural versus singular, because the year of the rat, uh, we only get one model. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, there's only one rat. So uh, it's the year of the rat singular. <laughs> if you don't finish the work this year, you got to wait seven years or whatever it is till the next one comes around. Yeah, there are uh, 12 years, I think. Oh, uh, no problem. Yeah. Just some... Um, um, totally unrelated information. <laughs> Anyone know? I guess we're all here. Anyone know any information we should wait for? Anyone we should wait for? Mm. Um, I think Ned is missing, but I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, Ned is missing. Yeah. Uh, I think I saw a decline from him <coughs> ah. today. Um, uh, bum, bum, bum. Where would I know that? Do, 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 do. I don't know. Yeah, why, why you looked that up? Sorry for uh, missing out last uh, week. I uh, was in a train in Germany and in, 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 a, in a track that inhibits any kind of internet, mobile internet. So, um, so. Oh, is that why we were so productive last week? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I haven't I seen any really um, issues. I remember being hey. very productive. Hey, Ned, joining. Oh, there we go, Ned. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, um, let's start with the term measure. Shall we? Uh, let me see if I can grab. Guess I'll take the whole window. <clears throat> so, mixed feelings about the term measure and then the other terms that, the other term there. Um, so Lawrence is very opposed to the word measure. Um, and then we have the suggestion of claim from way and um, anyway, what 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 is the feeling? Are we, can we can we live with measure? Do we need to do a different term? What is it we want to do here? <clears throat> so me measure, I think, has connotation of, of um, <clears throat> essentially computing a hash of something, whereas there can be other assertions that are imply other types of actions, uh, some sort of uh, um, you know, monitoring or inspection, 
that doesn't necessarily um, translate to a computation of a hash, although I suspect that, that those are in the minority. The majority of the time, it's it's. Yeah. So this is this is Monty. So <clears throat> measure does measure the way we've defined it in TCG. Measure and before that TCPA, measure doesn't define doesn't create an assertion. It's simply the equivalent of making an entry in an auto log. The assertion of the auto log is somebody signs it, somebody looks at it, somebody has a proof that is valid and evaluates it, that would be an assertion. But the entry in the auto log itself is not really an assertion. It's just a record that you're keeping. The, the, I guess the question is, is it a, is it, does it imply a hashing operation or is it just an entry? In other words, it could I, think, I, I think we need to make it general. TCG has defined it originally as a hash operation, but I think it should be generalized to include among the ways to do it, a hash is one of them. <clears throat> I thought the word measure was specifically chosen to avoid the word hash. Uh, so, right. that it was, right. so that it was broader than just a hash. Right. Yeah, 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 right, to my point, exactly. It was, yeah, I agree with that. So uh, that was the only way we had to do it, but we wanted to make a um, a, a, a broad statement, right, um, kind of a broad definition of, because we didn't know what might come down the line later. <clears throat> no, I agree that it should be uh, not tied to the notion of a hash, and I think to a uh, layman unfamiliar with TCG, the term measuring certainly doesn't apply hash. Uh, so, right. Personally, I think the term using the term measure is okay. Yeah. Now, the the the, the one thing that has that we've had a hard time with in TCG is does measure encompass the just focusing on hash, the implementation, I'll say. The, is, is measurement just simply the process of creating the, I'll use the term identity, thumbprint, whatever, using a hash is one of them, um, or is it a kind of the set of operations where you create the identity of the module, you extend it into something, record it. Let's see, I'll use the word record instead of extend because that extend has a particular operation. You record that that identity, and then you make an entry potentially into a log somewhere. That's a very TCG-centric sequence. But does the term measurement just simply mean the creation of the identity that can be put somewhere? Or is the definition of measurement creation of the identity recording it? Is it, is so it this, both or is it just? A... This is not identity. We're putting things in here that are not, not identity and not integrity. We're putting things in there like GPS, I mean, GPS location and software version. Well, yeah, okay. So, that, so. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. But my use of the term identity was, I was trying to come up with a generic term. Uh, and you, you, you're correct. There's got to be some, you know, uh, some term we use for the thing that's being measured. I don't so, know so what the if result it, of if the it, thing. Is. If it's a location sensor, we might say use terminology like sample, like a sampling or something. Well, yeah. like, yeah. But, but I, 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 I think that we ought to have a term that applies. Like, for example, we can measure. Um, you just use the term, assuming we accept it. We can measure um, the the bio settings. So basically, a bitmap, for example, of uh, whether USB ports are turned on and stuff like that. Right? That's not really a component. That's not an identity. Right? So in in which case, my term, my use of the term identity was incorrect for measuring things like that. And we're, geography we're not... or location is certainly one of them. 
And you, can say, you could say you inspect the bio settings as well, right? Um, when one could, and you could say you inspect the module. I guess we could use the word inspect. I prefer to stay with the word measure, but what the measurement process creates is, I think, I've used the term identity, but that's technically incorrect. Uh, I think what the measure process creates is what we need to be fading. So how about collect or record? Because that's what you're doing with many of those things. Oh, what, what, right, but what, so that's the, the action. What's the noun? What's the thing that you create Claims. that you're going to make an entry Claims. of? Claims. We already have that. Yeah. So I, yeah. I like the terms uh, collect or what was the other one that you mentioned? Re record. Yeah, co collect or record, I think, are oh. at least as good as measure. Um, I'm okay with any of those three. Okay. A record? Um, I, I think collect and record are probably closer to layman speak than measure, so that's why I kind of like either of those. So when you use the word record, is it a, because it's both a noun and a verb, no, are, you, are you saying verb. record? I would only use it as a verb. So as a verb. You record only the value of claims. A... You record the value okay. of claims. So we're using the word claim as the, the, the entry in the auto log, if you will. Well, what's that word you're using? Auto log? Is that? Is that audit, a... audit log. Audit log. Audit log. Yeah, so that's we... not a term. Yeah, A-U-D-I-T. No, I know. I'm trying to stay away from terms. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm speaking, you know, kind of <clears throat> generically, staying away from loaded terms, if you will. So, so I think collect. Yeah, I appreciate a little more intuitive than record. Sure. From a layman's perspective, maybe. Yeah, that's fine with me. I think you just collect the claims. I, I don't think we've replaced the word measurement. We've replaced it with claims, and then we've added a verb to it. We never had the term measurement in the – well, in the current uh, combined document, the term measurement doesn't appear to my – maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I agree. It doesn't occur. That was the question, whether or not we wanted to introduce the term. I'm just saying that I don't think we've – I don't think record or collect is acting in the same way that measure – it, uh, measurement is oh I guess it's acting the same way as a measure but not measurement correct correct and so right. Um, right. I'm all in favor of not adding more terms and trying to keep the number of terms minimal and so that's why between measurement I'm trying to find ways to just use the word claims with appropriate a claim with appropriate wording rather than measurement to see if it's possible to only use the term claim rather than using both claim and measurement. So whether we talk about collecting claims or collecting the values of claims, whatever the correct meaning is, are ways to use the word claim rather than using the word measurement. So do we prefer collect the values of claims? Well, that's like a multiple. The, the claims are basically, you know, name value pairs, right? And so whether your meaning is that you're collecting the values, you're collecting the name value pairs. Um, I'm okay either way, whichever is the intended. <clears throat> Yeah, this is my problem because uh, claims are not only key value pairs. They are key value pairs in CWT and JWT. They are not key value pairs in X509 certificates. And there we will also have the claims. All the things we, we collect or measure or record are in somewhere. And this are uh, the, the general term was uh, assertion. And then we agreed on hijacking the data model term claim for our abstract architecture. But uh, this is already a conflict in IETF terminology, and we did it to simplify for simplification purposes only. So actually what we're talking about is our assertions, but we agree that assertions and claims are somewhat synonym here. So Hank, can you say why you believe that it's not doesn't apply to certificates where you have an extension ID and the value of the extension? Because an extension ID is, is an OID, and it, this is, an, would you say this is the, the same as the definition of claim key in, say, JWT? 
I think claim key definition and OID definition for extensions is different. So I think what you're saying is the term name is not quite correct. And if you argue that, you'd argue that it's not correct in CWTs either, where it's an integer, right? And so maybe it's an ID value pair or something where the ID is a string in JWT, it's an integer in CWT, and it's an OID in uh, X509. CWT typically is just a number, but yes. Uh, it can also be an array of numbers and then so maybe it's an ID slash value pair and not a name slash value pair if you yeah. think it usually means string. Yeah, okay, so but still in theory you could just omit keys if you have very static structures in I don't know, a solution protocol and still have all the values without any keys have their meaning because of ordering and still convey the same information. I, I don't think we want to force yeah. anyone to use keys here. And again, this is a data model construct, and we are not using it in that way. We are just assuming it is uh, a value that has meaning uh, due to being an assertion. And that's all. And we are reusing claim for simplicity's purpose only, I think. So this is non-normative, high-level architecture. So I don't think we have to be fussy about uh, whether it's an integer or an OID, or if it's implied or explicit, I think we can. I think we can agree that a claim is some data structure that is identified some way. Um, you know, it's a distinct data structure. So whether it's a key or a label or an OID or whatever, it's a claim is basically an A value pair where the name could be a lot of different things and the value can be a lot of different things. Yes, again, and I would like to highlight that I don't want to force to use a uh, name in a solution. So, yeah, so I, I, I think you guys are actually having the same point um, yeah. where uh, you want to use the term claim without saying that there's a name or an ID or whatever because there's different ways to do it um, and just say that there's some meaning associated with the value. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, what do we yeah. mean by claim? I think both of you guys are saying that. Yeah, yeah. but we redefine claim. That is the important part here because claim is already claimed by JWT. It's defined there. And if we use it in a different way, we have to spell that out. But how are we using it in a different way? Because in JWG, the key is required. Isn't that just a detail of CWT, not something that's a generic architecture point? I, I, yeah, but right. you, yeah, yeah, but it's still, the, it's the instantiate JWT specific instantiation of the generic. No, no, the, the generic term is defined for data, this is claimed by the data model. It, is, it hogged that term. It is now used by JWT and inherited by CWT uh, uh, correspondingly. And the definition says it's a pair, period. And we are not using it as a pair here. That, that's the only issue I have with, 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 with the, the whole thing. And, and again, due to simplicity, we, we just look, overlooked that. But I think we have to spell it out in a side note somewhere. That this is not the same thing as the data model concept provided by JWT. We use claim in a different way. It's almost the same. So the semantic uh, meaning, which could be expressed in a key and the data model with JWT then as the actual claim. Or it's just semantic meaning, you know, because it's the third item in a, in a sequence. So, so add a note that says we, you know, in some cases, the, the, the name or label for a claim may be implied if the data structure, the data exactly. is, is, uh, allows, uh, uh, allows yeah. that sort of thing. It's as simple as that, I think, Lawrence, exactly that. But we have to spell it out at least once somewhere. Otherwise, this would uh, people who are used to just, just just implementing, and this is the problem here. I, I heard that, that this this document will be read by implementers directly. This is was one notion on the list, and, and then every yeah. No, just going to read the CWT the document or the eight document or that, and then that'll be up. I there was explicit request on the list. Uh, I think it's coming from Kathleen that uh, this architecture document will be consumed by pair programming teams of Dell. That may be true, although there's nothing that's directly implementable in this document. But yeah. Yeah. I know. Still, it would be highly confusing for them if they are talking about two things with the same name. So um, you should try to avoid that. So I I well if, if we're trying to avoid 
I mean, we're going to have a confusion of names anyway because TCG mm. has been using names. We're going to have to provide some decoder ring at some point um, because the, the path we're going down is we're going to be – this group's going to be using different names for similar or same things that TCG has traditionally used. I don't know if we'll move over. I, I can't speak to the future. But there's going to have to be some decoder ring for a while for – somebody or, you know, maybe indefinitely. Agreed. Um, so I don't, I kind of didn't figure out what the conclusion was from that conversation. Um, I think there was an argument that we should actually have a definition of claim that explains our generic sense, uh, maybe with a note that said, that, that explained, you know, uh, depending on how claims are encoded, the semantic meaning may be implied or uh, denoted, you know, or uh, indicated by virtue of having a name or ID. <clears throat> so, so I think it, <clears throat> the principle. Uh, is that you can't always find names without without colliding, and it isn't always appropriate to invent new names. And so, uh, if we're okay with reusing claim, we ought to be okay with reusing measure. I agree with that. Or if we're not okay with using measure, then then we shouldn't be okay with reusing claim. Yeah, I don't know. I am also re okay using reusing claims, but then using the term uh, collect or record, um, I have no objection to that either. Yeah. Collect claims or record claims. Yeah. Right, my, right now, that would be my preference, but yeah. I don't feel strong. Yeah. I'll, I'll vote for collect first, then record, okay. then measure. Right. I'll, collect I'll the vote. values of claims. That's I'll still vote. what we're trying to say? Yeah, I'll vote for that too. Yeah, that's my top one. Claims value collection. Claims collection. Your claim has been referred to a collections agency. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the 1980s Repo Man in my head now. <laughs> okay, that way I settled it. <laughs> so the one thing is, collecting claims means that the. Uh, a testing environment collects them, collects values from the target environment, which we haven't agreed upon yet. But I'm using it to yeah. sound very different than Dave already. Okay, so this is this is between those two environments. Okay, so the the, the the task conducted there is is collection, and uh, this is how we set it. Okay. So we need somebody to propose some text. I can do that only because this overlaps with the uh, pull request that Hank was just referring to that I uh, wrote straw man for yesterday. We've already seen some comments on, so I've got it updated anyway. That's the one. So, no, yeah, anyway. Okay. And then you, you think you're using measure there? Yeah, right. I've got to, I've got to step away for a few minutes. I'll be back. It, right, Hank. Okay. So that would change uh, to collect here. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that brings us to straw man test about freshness. That's your text overlaps. You just said. Uh, no, this is uh, yeah. that overlaps with uh, pull request fifteen. The two types of test eight, two types of environment section. That's the mm -hmm. one um, I will update based on that, that this discussion and the comments that people have entered to hear that I've only partly read through. Okay. So. Boo, 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 boo. This is another one of those placeholder sections uh, that is in the document right now. And so I took a shot at uh, filling in the placeholder based on, Michael, you'd started the bike shed thread. And so I read through that one yep. where it looked like the suggestion was to use the term target environment for the attested environment. And so um, I said, okay, well, if things are heading that way, I will try to use that as a placeholder. Maybe we change it later. Um, but uh, that was the suggestion that I saw in the bike shed, in the bike shed thread. And so I tried to pull in a uh, text out of the Burkhalls document and then update um, uh, various language to reflect the uh, bike shed thread and the discussion that we had last time. 
So target environments wouldn't so be measured anymore. Exactly. So that's what I was just saying is I volunteer to do the measure stuff because I have this text here, this pull request. I will need to update this pull request anyway for the comments. And so I will so, write all the sentences yeah. for measure. So what does that become? Target environments are? Target uh, target so environments. Uh, I'll, I'll figure out the words. I don't know anything on the call. But the point okay. is that, um, yeah. claims are collected from target environments. Mm -hmm. Like 288 would sound, say something like a testing environment or whatever term that we use, uh, do the collection. Testing environments conduct the measuring, they'll do the, they collect so the claims. It even says it right there. Uh, yeah, testing so environments I, collect I, the claims. It just, I can yeah, just delete three words. And just, uh, yes, yeah, there you go. Words. Should the TPM also be included as an example? That's a question for Hank, who answered it. Te technically, the TPM can't collect anything. It's relying on another root of trust element called a root of trust for measurement. But the, uh, but the target might be including a TPM, so it, we don't have to necessarily just collect from the chip. We can collect from the device which has the chip. So since this is already just a list of examples, it's easy to answer uh, William's question of, uh, well, let's not, because then you'd have to have a lot more text to, to explain these details. And so since this is just an example, it's not a complete list. And, and, and this is Elliot. One of the things that uh, we, we end up, I think you're exactly right, David, in that um, if you start talking about uh, how the TEE is going to validate everything that's on board, exactly how that happens is going to be probably somewhat implementation specific and we can get into great details that people will sit there and bicker over. Yeah. But saying less is uh, better here to just say, here's the principle. And in case you have a hard time understanding the principle, here's an example or two that maybe you already know. But on the other hand, um, I do think it's probably useful to highlight that that is an interesting area for for, for, for further work to, to to document precisely those sorts of issues, uh, how you do those proofs um, on a on a platform by platform basis. I like think it's useful to at least say that somewhere in the document so that it leads to future work. Yeah, this is Hank, and that's a good point because I personally, Hank, knows an example of TE like Trust Zone or an HSM like TPM, but I do not know an example of an ESE. Could, does someone could, could come on someone name one? I know it's somewhere in in the SOC, but I don't know how this works. I want to assume that a TPM was a, was a an embedded secure element. Okay. I have to ask. I think uh, Hannes. I uh, think Hannes is yeah. using the term extensively, and he might have a better understanding about this. Yeah, I think Hannes. Sir, what's the question again? He's asking for an example of an embedded secure element. Um. So. I mean, I think that that can be construed a couple different ways, and but you know, typically you take a uh, a secure element, you know, and solder it onto the circuit board, right? And I still don't know what it is. Is it a TPM? No. <clears throat> no, no, it's not. It's, so so Qualcomm announced something called the Secure Processor Unit last year, and it's actually integrated. It's even better than I mean, it's even uh, more tightly coupled. To the system on chip and it embedded and it's uh and it has all the capabilities of a of a sim card that a sim card would right. today or an nfc secure element it is not a ttm so uh, apple did apple did something similar when they call it an a uh, secure enclave <clears throat> yeah and intel yes. did something similar called a called a security engine the term secure element, I believe, is uh, defined by the Global Platform Standards Organization. And so an embedded secure element just means that it's not removable. So like a SIM chip is a secure element, right? An embedded secure yeah. element is like a SIM chip that's not removable. Right. Yes. And so I just posted in the chat room an example of a link which has some discussion, which is uh, Jamalto is one of the manufacturers of the secure element. Yeah. 
Yeah. So this, what does the secure element do in the context of creating evidence? You, you're, you should be asking Hannes this question as the expert. I don't know if you're <laughs> platform people. Uh, feel free, somebody to speak up if you are. Um, but uh, uh, sure. more like a TPM in that respect, I think. But again, I do not claim I am not a global platform person. Ask uh, I don't think secure. <clears throat> I don't think secure element was defined with a way to record integrity values. It's just for key storage. Depends. Uh, it's more like it's more like a TEE. Yes. It's programmable. It's yeah. Like, I, it, it typically runs yeah, Java yeah. card. Yeah, it's a TEE on a separate uh, chip. Yeah. As opposed to TEs yeah. like Presto and SGX, which are on the main chip. And it has memory. Yeah, but I think that, I think that what, what that means is that you can define a uh, you can define an applet that could do yeah. something equivalent to to a TPM, but uh, it, it's not. It has to be defined for that particular uh, for that right. particular secure element. Far more capable. Capable to make it. Yeah, it's a separate chip, but it's typically not programmable. The embedded sim is or embedded uh, secure element is a separate chip that is programmable with like a Java applet. And classic TDs like Trustone and SGX are on the main processor. So that's why they're three separate classes of things, but they're all uh, security hardened things. Somebody's tapping. And who admitted the woodpecker? Um, the, the indication on the roster says it was due to the stop. I don't know if it's true. It's gone now, in any case. He stepped away for a moment, so maybe something just happening in his office. No, oh, maybe. Okay. Is it worth highlighting that a testing environments can be nested? Is that important for here, or can that just be accepted? Uh, I think that's a subject if we scroll down a bit, because I do have a paragraph that does that, and I think it was Hank you commented on that. Actually, somewhere in here, because I did have a paragraph about that, and I know somebody commented on it, so maybe it's in this page somewhere. Um, see if I can find a line number on that. So the conclusion for this uh, uh, point here is we are not including a specific technology like TPM because we are abstracting trust zone and TPM with TE and HSM and now better understand that an ESE is like a TE but it is not included in the SOC, it is next to the SOC, so it's not integrated. but still embedded on the system. Uh, sorry, on the yeah, embedded device, whatever you call it. Okay. So if you scroll up, it was the discussion around line 279 to 282. Uh, it's the top of your screen, so scroll, yeah, the 279 to 28 down, past it. So William generated the comment first, and then uh, down through Hank, uh, yep, right there. The other implementations might have multiple attesting target environments. One example is a set of components in boot sequence, e.g. ROM, firmware, OS, and application, where a target environment is the attesting environment for the next environment in a boot sequence. You see William and Hank commented on this. I certainly agree with the ideas that uh, that we have nested environments. It might be worth what Hank says uh, to go ahead and have a section here. And this might be a place where we could talk about the TPM without having to, to go ahead and uh, hit the other later section talking about the testing environment there. I do think that there's value, since there's a lot of people who care about that environment, of explaining a way that it could be used with these terms. I can work with Hank or somebody else to put some text together there if necessary. Yeah, I think that's good. I want to tie, I think we have three different related things. I think there's uh, this PR, which tries to concentrate on filling out the definitions of a testing environment, target environment, whatever terms that we use. And then there's uh, William's PR that we talked about last time that I see he just did another commit to that I haven't read yet, um, which was about the sub environments and so on. And then there's uh, Hank and Hank's point here about uh, maybe we should have more on the notion of you know layered or nested or whatever we want to call it. Um, and so what I had said on Williams is maybe that one should be a subsection of something else, and maybe layered should be a subsection of this section. Um, I think it's fine to treat those as three different PRs and saying there's a generic one, 
And then uh, maybe there's a layered specific extension as a separate PR. And if you want to take the action item on that one and create a, and change this paragraph into a subsection or something like that in this in a different PR, that would be great. I, I don't. I didn't. I didn't mean to uh, describe uh, to detail describe this in this PR. I just want to uh, make this no, it's idea. To your PR. It is related to your PR, though. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make this the uh, want to show my idea to to make this idea clearly to describe uh, how to use these terms to describe the composite devices. Okay, I see. You're saying. You could use these terms in uh, your PR, I think is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. So uh, apparently, because I proposed that, I think it's I think it should be a separate section. Maybe it's again a pre. Um, it's actually before, sorry, but not native speaker. And um, and uh, but who's going to uh, take on that first? Um, I don't know. Detangling. So this is a new poll request. This is a new poll request to describe this part here. The composite pieces. No. The it layered is. piece. I think I thought I thought somebody else a minute ago spoke up to said that they were willing to take a shot at writing some text. I am. I'm just making sure I'm not stepping on. And this is Eric. I'm just not making sure I'm not stepping on William or Hank. So uh, uh, I'm I just waiting to see who wants to do it. If not, I'll do it. Okay. Um, in terms of sequencing, um, do you have any reason that the text in this little paragraph here is Wrong. I'm imagining that in your PR, you're going to replace this paragraph with a subsection or something like that. And so that's the idea. And so if it so and if that's true, then it might be fine to leave this paragraph as a placeholder with the intent that you're going to replace it. Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay. As opposed to you know deleting it now or something like that, I would leave it in here, and then you can use it as a text to steal from and expand or whatever in a subsection. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, actually, I I think uh, the layered attestation um, uh, may have the same uh, idea with the last PR I committed uh, the composite device. In. So maybe Eric, I can communicate with you later to share this idea. That works for me. I did see where you did there, and I do think there are elements that could be comprised. I think that when I read your section, I was thinking line card assembly. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's let's go back and forth on that. So I, I'm trying not to step on it. If you want to take a first cut at the text and see already the layered stuff, I'm just making sure it gets covered. So if you want to give it a shot, uh, I have no problem with it. But I'm happy to co yeah. co coordinate either way. Yeah, I'm imagining that there might be, I mean, feel free to give different proposals, but I'm imagining that underneath this section, there might be two uh, following subsections of this section, one on the layered part that maybe Eric authors, and then one on, um, I don't know what the right term is, where you have a composite device section um, that's what uh, William authors, and they would be back-to-back -back, uh, subsections at, underneath this overall section. I actually, All right, so at least I, we know I, layering layering composites are separate, so yeah, uh, yeah. for sure. But having them be adjacent in the document, I think, is useful. I agree. All right, so William, I'll go ahead and uh, write some straw man and then ping you and Hank and others just to see if how, how you think it might match into what you're trying to do, which I also agree with. We do need the, we need to do the composites as well. Do, was there agreement on the difference between a testing environment and sub-attester? Sub-attester 
Uh, Neurology. Well, I can give examples, but I, I don't necessarily know if uh, that's what we're ready to do right now. I think you should ask that question once we actually have Williams PR up on the screen. So yeah, I um, don't think it, it needs to be decided right now. Yeah, it's, do, it may be more discussed. Do Do we want to accept this this pull request as is and then change it for the measuring word, or do you want to rewrite it, uh, Dave? Uh, I am okay either way, whichever you prefer. I'm in slight favor of uh, accepting it with the notion that this will be uh, best again as a like split apart. Certainly, I guess the advantage of accepting it now and then having me do the uh, change to collect and stuff in a separate one is that that unblocks Eric to immediately use the uh, master branch. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bad agreement. <laughs> Works for me. Somewhere's the button. Okay. There's the button. Which one is the straw man? This one is no. No. This one. This one. Which one are you looking for? Uh, you said, I don't know, whichever one you wanted to go to. There was only... Um, there was... Uh, the question that was just being asked was more of a question about Williams PR. Oh, okay. Well, here it is. There we go. Sorry, I thought you said Hank PR. Device one, which is related. And so that's what I was saying is I think this one should become whatever the result of this one is. Because like I said, I have not reviewed the new commit that happened last night in my time. Uh, once this one is ready, then I think this most likely belongs with a subsection immediately following the PR that we just merged. I agree with that. Uh, but but I have um, uh, one thought about uh, uh, first. Uh, I have actually two thoughts. Uh, first is that um, uh, from Hank's reply to my comments, I think I think. This can be a part of the layered attestation section. And uh, secondly, that uh, uh, the data flow, uh, you can you can see the uh, I update the data flow diagram. You can you can see, you can see the diagram, and uh, I think it's it um, gives some new idea to the data flow. And uh, uh, from this picture, you can see that. The uh, the the structure of uh, attestation results. Uh, for example, the young module uh, young module uh, will be part of the uh, will be part of the evidence, or the young module can be reused in the evidence. The young module of attestation result can be reused in the evidence. I think this part can can explain why this happened how this happened because uh you know uh in the diagram and uh, the verification result of the sub uh, let's just to say sub units uh can be the part of the evidence so uh this can uh, result in the uh, young module of testing results can be part uh, can be reused in the uh, young module of evidence so I think it can be used, uh, can um, also can be described in the data flow part. So, sorry, so proceed. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you go. You go. Okay. Uh. So procedure-wise, I think uh, we have to still review this one more time due to time constraints, I guess, and then see how to uh, accept this into the document. The, but there are two things here. There are the uh, um, composite device concept in general, and then there is a specific uh, way how we express it in diagrams. I think the diagram. And terminology thing 
was one of the things we were not sure about yet because redundant diagrams and making them compare each with each other was like uh, tedious or something. And uh, I'm not, I don't think that the, I don't know if the new pull request addresses the uh, split brain two diagrams, the same layout have different terms in it problem. Um, if so, cool. If so, if not, we still have to do that. But but this does does this in now our sequence procedure wise. Uh, do we have to resolve the complete pull request first before we start a section on device composition, or will this be the seedling? I'm not really sure because if so, we have to really address the uh, diagrams and the content first, and then go with the uh, um, back to back <coughs> composite device layer attestation sections. Yeah, I agree. I agree with everything that Hank just said. Um, uh, since this is the update which was done like what three hours ago or something, which was like 4 a.m. my time, I have not had a chance to review it yet. I need more time to to go through it. So, but I have the same questions as Hank. So this we're looking at the updated diagram or uh, the it's, updated it's, diagrams it's here on the one because I saw that the updated one combined the two arrows that we talked about. That's the one thing I did. Is this that the diagram from the the section that describes the roles is this different from that diagram? It's a or different is, diagram is than the than it's a new it's another diagram. So so I, I we this is the composite uh, device, and then we have composite network. Composite and it still network. Has, I I I haven't uh, deleted it. So uh, let's see the composite thing. device. Okay, so it just uh, we're just going to have one additional diagram or two additional diagrams. I thought that's what we wanted last week was one. No. Yeah, I, yeah, just the one. Uh, because okay. I the I I I was hurrying to commit this. Right. So, and, so this uh, is the one that you want: evidence of composite device uh, with the one arrow. Yeah. Claims of sub attester. Do any of these terms terminology have to change uh, based on our uh, previous conversation? I think um, this may be not the final uh, uh, terms. Uh, I just want to read this to uh, to show some idea. Um, I, I looking I'm looking for some better names from you. Is it? I'm noticing there's two sub attester B. Is that intended? Oops. So I haven't tracked all the diagrams, but my preference is that to use the term attester for the, the smallest, most atomic uh, attester component, um, and to use the term aggregate attester for something that aggregates more than one uh, attester. So in this diagram, I would change subattester B and subattester B to just be attester. And then I would would put a, a box around all of it and call it the aggregate attester. Well, Lawrence, aggregate and composite are synonyms, right? And so you you would oh, use yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's fine. I like composite better, actually. <laughs> so this is yeah, the we have composite attester than here. Yeah, that, that's my suggestion. Yeah, yeah. I, hey, this I, is I, uh, I, this I, is I, this, I like this that. Is, yeah. Yeah, this is Gary here. I like that terminology too. Hey, one thing when I was going through the bike shed email chain, um, there's this concept of delegated adaptation, where, for instance, an, a device can't attest for itself, so uh, an external observer attests on its behalf. How? How? I my my feeling is that as long as we separate out a tester and target, that concept should still fit into the definitions that are being discussed. Yeah, I um, agree. Am I right? I agree yeah, with you. Okay. Yes, it was observed. I, I think uh, I agree with the worst target on this diagram. If you have a manufacturer certificate of origin for a particular uh, piece of hardware, then that's an example of what you just said, where uh, in some sense the uh, uh, manufacturer is uh, uh, attesting or collecting claims about whatever term that we use, where the hardware is the target environment. And so you could view it as that if you chose to. Do we want to show? I don't see target anywhere on this diagram. Do we want to show that, or is that no, kind of under the covers? 
inside That's the inside. Okay. component, inside the term a tester right. component on the left, um, is the, is uh, different types of environments. This is the different. This is not the layered sense, right? This is uh, two okay. different devices as part of a composite device case, right? So I think I told you yeah, what, what about the case of? Yeah. Sorry, there, there's a more simple diagram that just, that has the target and the a testing environment, um, and uh, that that would be helpful. You're saying? Are you asking there? To be one, or are you saying there is one? I'm saying there should be. There's probably oh, should, should be, one. be okay. one. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, I agree. Words. But adding it to this diagram would probably make it too complicated. Yeah. To show this in layers. Would you like there to be a diagram? That diagram's probably too complicated too. I mean, having a diagram with only two boxes and one line in it isn't terribly interesting. But uh, what about having a diagram as part of the layered stuff that Eric writes? Would that be useful? Yeah. So maybe we just assign that request to uh, Eric when you write it up. Please include some diagram. I can give it a shot. Sure, the sure. interesting question is: there an overlapping diagram between um, the composite and the layering? Uh, it might not. So mm -hmm. I'm going to have to make sure they're either very separate or or not. But I, I can come up with a very simple doc diagram of layering, and then we can either chunk it or take it as we see fit. My preference uh, would be to not have any overlap. In terms yep, of agreed. between the two. Agreed. Yeah, between composite and layered, yes. Agreed. So the the idea is there's layering within a single component. Um but there can also be multiple components. Or devices. If you're right. doing drill down, you could say multiple components, one of those components, drill down into it, there's layering. That's where you get the target and the testing environment. But then there can be multiple of them, is what we're saying for layering. And I, uh, I can I work apologize. on layering as well. well. But I just have to ask the question, are we decomposing a little bit too much here in terms of the, the component architecture? Is, 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 this a, is this a matter of naming, or is this something where, where we really are getting too, too far into the internals uh, of the component? I think layering uh, and composite are both important concepts to explain here, and it's because there's a uh, the, one of the things that the working group has talked about is how you uh, have different claim sets relate to each other in the actual I don't know data model or serialization format, right? Uh, and being able to motivate in the architecture the two types of relationships, which then motivates why you have different ways of encoding things in the encoding format. Now, we don't have to go through all possible combinations, but saying, hey, there's two types of relationships is important to motivate because that will show up in actual code and an actual encoding format. Okay, as long as we're not getting wrapped around the axle in the process, right? Which exactly, is right, right. Which is why I don't want all the possible combinations and have a unified diagram that shows how they fit together. I think that is overkill, but just motivating why there's two types of relationships that show up in the encoding format. I think that's what we said as a working group that we expected there to be something in the architecture document that motivated. Okay, that's fine. But the diagram that was up uh, earlier is, I think the best word I could use is dizzying. Yes. <laughs> and two diagrams was twice as dizzying. Yeah. Yes, that. I mean, we could. I but would, where would I just would kind of a... separate them? <laughs> These are two diagrams that are glued together. Don't need to be. So kind this of diagram a, could, kind of a include, stuff. This diagram could be just just from lines twenty four down, maybe. I was thinking the yeah. same thing, Michael. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And, and kind of on that, yeah. as a limbness test, well, how would IMA fit in with this? Because IMA collects all the firmware stuff, different domain of the platform, and then creates a measurement of it. Use whatever term we use and then starts collecting information about the OS and apps. Would that be, but they're collected all into a different sort of PCRs, very TCG implementation example, but would that would those be two sub-attesters? I think, Mr. Schenk, I think there would be different layers. 
of the uh, tester. Okay. Just just trying to make so, sure this model uh, continuously works in yeah. you know in existing just you know for existing the, the implementations. The abstraction is should be fairly clear. The bottom half. I think there's a question of what is a component? Is it something physical or is it just you know uh, some kind of a software layer? Like is it a you know? So I think there's different a, software modules are connected together. Is a question. I don't know if that's what other people are thinking. So, sorry, Ned. Uh, there's a little delay on the line here. Um, I, I think actually what, what Monty was talking about was interesting because um, you could almost do a separate document just on that, and it might be a useful proof point to have in your back pocket. Yeah, and I think that's what we need at the end of this is to be able to justify our architectures against existing um, basically existing implementations of active station and make sure that it fits or not creating it's one is off. IMA different? So, so as an is the relationships in IMA somehow different from the relationships in BIOS? Um, they are, IMA combines the two domains of OS and and firmware. Anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to rat hole on it. Too. I'm sure that plan has been left, used. Yes. Left in our schedule. Yeah. Time. And so uh, yeah. I and I need to run. Idea, and so I wonder, Michael, is can, if you can annotate as a comment in the actual PR your um, suggestion, which I agree with. My suggesting about terminating at line twenty or starting at line twenty-four in the diagram. You mean? Yeah, because everything above that is the same as previous diagrams. The part below that is the main point of the diagram. So that's why I agree with it. That you can simplify the diagram by only showing the parts that are uh, you know, special about this section. Makes sense. You, you can still have a line coming out the top that says, you know, uh, evidence of compo for a composite device and so on coming out the top or whatever. But you don't have to uh, say what it connects to because it's you can refer to the previous figure, and, you know, another figure in the text. So. Yeah. Okay. So William, so I need to log out because I have another meeting. Live, so I need to um, go. We didn't get to this one. Uh, freshness, that's fine. So um, next week is fine. Next week. Reading comments. Yeah, next week. Okay, and if you haven't filled out the doodle poll, I guess it's too late for a virtual interim. Nancy wants it filled out. If you haven't filled it out. Okay. Thanks. Talk to you guys next week. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. Michael. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.